my name is Mark Flo, and uh, I was asked to do a, a, a little presentation because they know that I do a lot of local fly fishing here, and I just fish the local waters. I'm by no means an expert on fly fishing and entomology of streams or fish genetics. I'm just going by what I've either culminated through my time fly fishing or talked to other fly fishing or read in books. And um, I really have a passion for two things. One of them is hiking and that's what got me started. And then my buddy who was a hiker fly fisher took me up to Tahoe and I started fly fishing up in the Tahoe area when we were hiking. And, uh, as we say, the rest is history. And then I started fly fishing and I got involved with some groups down here and these guys were showing me a lot of the local streams. And uh, these are, these are uh, really neat areas to go, to spend time. I enjoy time just walking the stream and fly fishing and you know, stealing away a day from our busy lives, just kind of hanging out on a stream and, and being in nature. It really is an enjoyable time for me and uh, catching fishes. So my idea was I was asked to kind of show uh, there are more streams. I'm just going to kind of show some of the more streams that are available or have decent fish in them. There are a lot more that's available to you. Uh, you know, get a topo map, get a map, look on there, look what's close to you. There's a lot of fishing. These are smaller streams and it's, it's, um, it's, it's difficult fishing in terms of you're not going to be having these big long casts and these uh, 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 you know, a river runs through it kind. This is a lot of dab fishing, although you can, in some of these streams, find some good areas to fish. But it's, it's, uh, it's tight quarters, as they call it. But you have the opportunity within an hour of this place to be catching a six or an eight inch rainbow, driving within an hour of here and being on the river and catching a fish. And that's a unique thing for Los Angeles. And a lot of people don't even realize it. So, uh, you know, these are unique areas. We need to respect it. You know, we. Uh, I practice catch and release and I would ask all of you to do the same too. This is a resource that we need to put back. So, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where I'm just going to go over Piru. <clears throat> I'm going to cover some of the access, what you need to fish, the bugs that I find in the water, and uh, the fish that are available to you. And I'll show you some pictures of some fish that I've caught. This is a slide of the waters that are available close to the Los Angeles area. Castaic, we got Piru. Uh, the other Castaic, we got Santa Anita, San Gabriel, up around Arrowhead, Deep Creek, Bear Creek, the lakes. Also, there's the ocean here that's available. That's another slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you need to bring? Where is the river located? What access to the stream? Fishing gear you'll need and the kind of flies you'll need. So this is just a pretty quick primer on this so you can get more in depth. I'm not going to go too terribly into this, uh, into of, uh, entomology and stuff. I have heard some talks from some guys that really, it's really educational, and, and that's something that you can pursue more, too. Um, one thing you need to be is a lot of these streams are walking streams, and you're going to have to walk a mile or two miles. And I'm since I'm an avid hiker, I'm a proponent of always having the 10 essentials with you. Now, this can be found on the internet on any hiking site. I would tell you that you need to bring some stuff that, you know, should you twist an ankle, you would be fine. And, you know, I'm not trying to scare you, but the 10 essentials are kind of important. I always carry most of these with me if I go more than a couple hundred yards away from a road. Just, uh, that's just me and, and the way I was taught to hike and the way I was taught to go out. And these are kind of wilderness areas. So uh, what you'll need to bring in the cold months, I would suggest waders. Uh, I wear waders up until about April, and then I start toughing out, and I always wear long pants when I'm in these streams, just because there's stuff that you can brush up against, like nettles and poison oak, and Lord forbid a rattlesnake took a, tried to take a bite at you, at least you have some cloth between you and the snake. So uh, <clears throat> you can, you can uh, if it's cold, you're gonna wet wade. If it's warm, uh, you can just, or if it's cold, you're gonna use waders. If it's warm, you're gonna use uh, wet wade. And a four, a four weight rod will suffice for any of this. Um, I fish an eight foot. Uh, I have friends who have made six foot for doing these streams and that works just well. Uh, that's something you kind of, they don't usually sell those, although I have seen a few for sale in places. Um, a nine foot would work. It's a little harder getting in there, but an eight, an eight weight, or I mean an eight foot is a typically good rod that you could use in these areas. The first one we're gonna talk about is Piru Creek. Um, this is a tailwater out of, out of uh, Pyramid Lake. 
<clears throat> it, uh, it's really two miles from Frenchman's Flat, which is a campground. There's a mile of stocked water, and then there's a mile of catch and release water. And you can go below it. That's all uh, standard regulations below it. It's a rugged area. I would definitely carry 10 essentials if I went below, and if I walked below. But it's, uh, there are bigger fish down below the farther you go. Some places it looks like frog water, and there are bass down in there. But there's also trout in there, too. So we get there. Piru Creek is, uh, we take five north. We pass Valencia. There's Templin Highway is the off-ramp. You'll drive four miles down. There's only one way to go, and it's where the old road, they, they put a, a, a gate there. So. And this is a little topo map of the area. So here's where we drive in. Here's going to be the fishing area where it's uh, stocked. And then up above this, this is the catch and release area. This is the area downstream. This is some uh, rugged areas, but there are fish in there. Uh, if you're adventuresome, I'd take a buddy, and I would go. Bring lots of water. Uh, it gets warmer in the summer, too. I don't fish this in the summer. I fished it in the spring and the fall. So. Here we go from the parking lot. This is the old highway. Here's the gate that kind of curves around up and through here. And this is an urban fishery, so you'll notice there's a little graffiti on here that's been cleaned off. Uh, it does get busy on the weekends. Uh, if you're going to go, I'd go early. Get out early. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, this time of year, it's not that busy. There aren't that many people around. So. We've walked down the road a ways here. Here's a bridge that we've just crossed, and you can go down. And then there's fishing all along here. This is very uh, uh, overgrown in this area. It's, it's tough fishing. It's dab fishing. You, you reach in, but there are fish there. It used to be more popular. They're not stocking this area now. They will eventually when the stocking program continues in these streams. And this is the check dam. This check dam, as you walk up, you'll run, you'll, you'll see it. It's right off the road. Up above this is the catch and release area. And is, there this is, the, is there a sign there? Or yeah. 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 So this is kind of what you're looking at at the lower stretches of the stream. <coughs> When I say it's, it's, it's tough fishing, you got to kind of work your way in there and work the water. You're not going to be having any big long casts. This is dab fishing in this area of the stream. As you go up a little bit, it gets a little more open in some areas, but it's not. And there's the sign up above there. So you know you've reached the uh, wilderness trout area, the wild trout area. And so there's a little map. So here's our parking lot. <coughs> this is the campground. Here's a bridge about half a mile up. There's the waterfall. There are three access points getting down to the river up above this area. And one's a road that you can go down to. Uh, this is slower water here. This is uh, a gentle trail down the creek. It zigzags down. I call it the fisherman trail. And this is over rocks getting down to the upper area. These are some of the insects that we find in the water. We have a caddis here. We have another caddis here. And we have a uh, mayfly here. I, I've never found stoneflies in there. I assume they probably are. I've just never caught one. So uh, I had some pictures of some nice trout in here that I caught 10 years ago. And when my hard drive crashed, I lost them. So, yeah. uh, I've been fishing. I used to fish this much more than I do now. Uh, the last two times I went, all I caught was small ones. I did see a couple big ones. They're there, but I hadn't caught any in a while. 10 years ago, it was a much better fishery. But it's still fishing. There's still fishery there. There's still fish there. So, so the, this is the West Fork of the San Gabriel. This is a very accessible stream. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, access. It's a road that goes from where it crosses over back to Cogswell Dam. You can walk it. You can bike it. If you're handicapped, you can get a Forest Service key and drive back. And there are handicap ramps back there. Some of the people that I fly fish for, with work with Project Healing Waters and take veterans back there and catch fish off of the wheelchair ramps. So it's an accessible. The first two miles, or it's a mile and an eighth, is a uh, not catch and release. Past the second bridge becomes catch and release. And the farther back you go, the better the fishing gets. So uh, I take a bike and I go back at least three to four miles before I start fishing. And it's a, it's a beautiful little canyon. So we're going to come up Highway 39. I will cover the East Fork on this way. We cross a bridge. There's a parking lot there. And then we can go over past the second bridge. This is the catch and release area.
And all those catch and release areas are marked pretty well? Yes, yes. Do the fish get bitter, bigger the farther back you go? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I don't want to tell you there's 24 inch trout back there because there's not. But, <laughs> so. Mark, how far is the second bridge? The second bridge is about 1.9 miles. So, can be weighted in the warm months. Otherwise, uh, waders. I used to use felt sole boots when I made the slide. I don't anymore. Uh, I would recommend a bike. Uh, you know, if you're worried about it being stolen, I'd just stash mine off into the side, but you could lock it. There's plenty of trees and stuff to lock it to, the reservoir. Uh, four weight, eight foot rod works best back in here. Although, like I said, some of my friends have built six foot rods for fishing this area. And the fishing's recovered there since the fire and all the. Yeah, they're still there. They're still there. Um, Are you able to fish the Cogswell? No. No. So, this is a picture of the watershed. Uh, this is from the bridge. This is the West Fork. This is the North Fork. This is Bear Creek. This is fishable too. Um, <clears throat> there have been reports of big fish in there. I've never caught any. And this is up above. This is fishable too from the highway. I've never fished it, but friends of mine have. So I just want to tell you that's an option. This is where the most productive water I've found is. Uh, this East Fork will cover in the second part of this, this little area. So, and this is looking back, well I should say, this is Bear Creek. I took this picture from up here, and this is looking back in the watershed. Since I'm an avid hiker, you show me this, my view is, let's go. <laughs> uh, this is a beautiful canyon. That's the West Fork down there. This canyon works its way up here. There is a trail about halfway up and then goes up the side. Past that, you're bushwhacking. It's, uh, you're walking over boulders. There are fish up in there. And some, some people have reported to me that they've caught some very nice fish. Um, like I say, I never have, but uh, it's worth going up and looking around. It's a beautiful canyon to fish in. It is very overgrown. It's a great place to go spend a day just exploring. So, and like I said, these are urban fisheries. This is the, the uh, sign before you come in and it explains where the bridge is. And then these are the, uh, the uh, wheelchair ramps that you can go into and they've named them. And here I am on a typical winter morning going up there. Uh, I bring my bike, I got my little waders, nice jacket, hat, my little four piece, my little camera right there. That's what I take all these pictures. When I'm up there, I bought a little waterproof camera. Then I share the experience with my friends. You know, and uh, so this is a, a beautiful day up there. You can tell it's winter because there aren't too many leaves in the tree. It's getting cold. This is a couple of my fly fishing friends that I fish with, and they're down in the stream getting ready to go in there. <clears throat> this is the winter months. There are some leaves in there, but it's kind of clear. During the summer, it gets very overgrown and gets very dark down in there. So this is a this is a winter picture, but I took it in the winter so you can actually see, because during the summer all you'd see is green leaves. You wouldn't see the, the the stream. So this is what it looks like. These are there are areas where there's faster water and slower water. There's a lot of different kind of, there's dry fly water, there's pools, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of water that you can fish here, so. And of course, this is a fall day. I love coming up here in the fall when the leaves change color. Take my bike up here. I sat up here and had lunch and just in the orange leaves and it was glowy because it was reflecting the orange. Just a beautiful day up in the, in the local mountains. Just a great way to spend an afternoon. This is the kind of stuff that really, you know, we have busy lives full of all our stress and you can go up here for three or four or five hours and just get away from all that. And it's an hour away. And uh, so this is last year. <laughs> I went up there because they said it rained and they said the snow was a certain level. I got up there and I said, well, I'm going anyway. So I went back in there and the snow came out, or I mean the sun came out and started melting it. It was hitting me on the head. I had to put my rain gear on. But I caught fish and I had a fun day and I had the whole place to myself. 